Excellency the Vice Mayor of Vienna, Excellencies, Honorable Ministers, Ambassadors, Distinguished Delegates, Ladies and Gentlemen, on behalf of UNIDO and the organizers of this conference, we wish to welcome all of you to Vienna. Indeed, I am delighted and honored to welcome you to the third session of the Vienna Energy Forum, this important global forum which is being co-hosted by UNIDO, together with the government of Austria and the International Institute for Applied Systems Analysis. At the outset, let me thank wholeheartedly all our partners, the government of Austria, the International Institute for Applied Systems Analysis, the German Federal Ministry for Economic Cooperation and Development, GIZ, the government of the Republic of Poland, the Global Environment Facility, the R20 Regions for Climate Action, which is which was created by Arnold Schwarzenegger, the Renewable Energy and Energy Efficiency Partnership, REAP, the OPEC Fund for International Development, the International Chamber of Commerce, and the group called Advantage Austria, which is the Austrian trade organization. All of these partners have come together to, put, to support this third rendition of the Vienna Energy Forum. My special word of thanks also go to many other partners and supporters who inspired us over the years, worked with us and supported us in every way as we try to put this forum together. I want to particularly mention the support we have received over the years from the government of Brazil, whose leadership is dedicated to poverty eradication through access to energy. I want to recognize the management of Etiapu. At one point, Etiapu was the biggest dam in the world in the region of Foz de Guazú. And I'm pleased to announce that today, in fact, we will launch our new UNIDO Brazilian government bioenergy center in Foz de Guazú, which the press release will be released later today. I would also like to thank the government of Spain for their support in our work on sustainable energy for development and for the establishment of our regional center for renewable energy in West Africa in Cape Verde, sponsored by Spain, Austria, and a number of other governments, which is becoming an important renewable energy hub in Africa. Allow me at this point, one of our friends who was part of creating this forum, but also has been a thought leader in energy in Africa, who passed away just March. My dear friend, Professor Abiku Bruhamant of the Kwame Nkrumah University of Science and Technology, who passed away in March, was a major thinker for us in energy systems and was a part of the Secretary General's advisory group to develop the Sustainable Energy for All initiative. Abiku passed away and really would like to dedicate this whole forum to him because he was a lone voice in Africa for some time advocating for energy planning and particularly how we can transform energy systems and the link between access to energy and poverty reduction. At this stage, we'll have a video and then I'll continue with my statement. Did you know that New York State uses more energy than all of Sub-Saharan Africa? Nearly a billion and a half people lack access to electricity. Nearly three billion people cook in deadly fumes. Energy can transform economies, lives, continents, our planets. We have a historic chance to eliminate energy poverty. UN Secretary General Ban Ki-moon has launched a new initiative. 
Let's bring energy to all. To power. Women. Progress. Growth. Our, our future. future. Energy, energy for all. all. Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, this video, which was aired by CNN a hundred times globally that reached millions, hundreds of millions of homes, really puts in context why we created this forum. Seven years ago, when we started conceiving of this forum, people asked us, why do you need another energy forum? We realized then that there were a number of energy conferences, but they were focused on technologies, oil and gas, nuclear, you name it. We didn't have a forum where we discussed energy and development in totality. That's how we conceived of this, and we're very pleased six years on that all our partners are still together, and in fact, today we realize how crucial energy systems are to international development, but more importantly, to sustainable development. Six years ago when we started here, we never imagined that some of what will be discussed here will eventually become a global initiative. It was in this forum four years ago that we started testing the idea of having energy goals and energy targets. I'm very pleased that today the, Pre the Secretary General of the United Nations and President of the World Bank are now chairing a group, an advisory group, on sustainable energy for all, where the three goals we coined here in this forum have become global goals. To achieve universal access to energy by 2030, to double the annual rate of improvement of energy efficiency by 2030, to double the share of renewables. So an open forum, open dialogue, no politics here, just the reality that energy runs through everything. Energy is important for mankind's uh, uh, survival. Clear discussions here, we now emerge with these three. So you might ask yourself, why are you here? You're here today because thanks to you, we started a global movement, a global movement on energy. And I'm very pleased that one of the people addressing you today will be Mr. Chad Holliday, Chairman Bank of America. He and I chaired, co-chaired an advisory group for the Secretary General that has built a new initiative on sustainable energy for all. We never imagined that will happen seven years ago. The reason why I emphasize Brazil, it was Brazil who took Chad and his group to Rio Plus 20 to make the case that without sustainable energy, you cannot have sustainable development. Now we are at a phase where we're setting, we have an infrastructure established, but I'll leave that for Mr. Holiday to explain to you because he's the chairman of my new board. He will tell you what sustainable energy for all is. My role was just to tell you the goals you started debating four years ago. We've shaped them now into a political movement led by the Secretary General of the United Nations and the President of the World Bank. But today I throw another challenge to you. Our journey is not finished. We were preparing you for the real challenge. We want to have an energy goal when world leaders decide on the new development agenda for the next two decades, what they call the post-2015 development agenda. In 99, when the Millennium Development Goals were discussed, they left out energy. We realized three, four years after we started implementing the Millennium Development Goals that without access to energy, you could not achieve them. So here's the challenge to you. One year after Rio, we meet here to ask what has happened with energy. Is energy really recognized indeed as that golden thread that runs through sustainable development? How do we get an energy goal specified in that post-2015 agenda? How do we get a sustainable development goal that is energy? That's the challenge we throw for you, the experts, those of you from civil society and government. If we truly believe that energy is core, energy is core to development, can we define that goal organize ourselves over two years to lobby for it and challenge the political processes to have our goal defined. I don't know if my sl last slide is ready. Probably it's not. Okay, we'll show it later. But meanwhile, I use words to describe. We want one goal, sustainable energy for all. 
Within that goal, we're gonna establish a number of targets. Target one, universal access to energy. Target two, doubling the annual rate of improvement of energy efficiency. Target three, doubling the share of renewables. But we want to introduce six more targets. I give you two that we've already developed now with WHO. We bring to zero the number of premature deaths due to indoor air pollution. Today, 3.5 million people have premature deaths due to indoor air pollution, 3.5 million. If you add some others who are dying because of external air pollution, it's about 4 million. That number is double the number of mortalities due to HIV, AIDS, and malaria combined. 80% of them are women and children. Can we bring that to zero? We're introducing that as target four. Target five, can we electrify, provide modern energy services to 400,000, 400,000 primary health care units in developing countries? Those two new targets are from WHO. In other words, energy is an enabler of health. The challenge for you now, can you help us define the energy food nexus? What are the targets there? Energy and water nexus, energy and women. That's the challenge we throw to you. You are the experts. We will use the convening power of our leaders to ensure that when we discuss the new development agenda, that in fact, yes, we demonstrate that energy is the ultimate enabler of all sustainable development goals. That's the challenge for you experts. And we have a mechanism now, we have a coalition, a movement that we believe can make that a reality in two years. With that said, I've given you the challenge for your conference. And again, don't underestimate it. You started here four years ago, now we have energy on the global agenda. Now the next challenge is let's get it in in a form where we can measure progress, we can show evidence over time. This is simply what we have to do, but as you know, when I say simply you, the energy experts know, it's very complicated. It's politics, it's technology, it's investments, and it's people. How do we align all of those? But that's for you and the leaders that we've invited here to talk about. At this stage, please allow me to introduce the representative, the Austrian representative, to the United Nations, uh, Madam Stix Hilkel, who is here representing the Foreign Minister and Vice Chancellor, who for unavoidable reasons could not be with us here. They are always here with us every, every few years, but this time he had to be called off to go somewhere else, but he sent us a special message. Madam Ambassador, you have the floor. <laughs> 